All right, all right. Welcome, welcome, everyone. I'm officially live from the 713, which is the area code here in Houston, Texas. I almost said Indianapolis because I've gotten so used to uh, being able to, to, to hear that. Uh, but it's Friday. It's just past the 12 p.m. Central Time hour. I know there's different time zones and everything that are out there. Uh, for those of you who are hopping on here, uh, is appreciate you uh, so much. I'll be doing these live streams on just, I wouldn't say random topics, but more geared towards uh, real estate uh, and business overall. But this is one of the, the topics that I really do enjoy uh, touching on, which is deleting your social media and the effects uh, that you have uh, from that uh, and how it has benefited me in my uh, journey in life is, is on the side of being able to just well, I don't want to go to, too much into the topics but uh, and the, the talking points. But for everyone uh, who is on here, go ahead and comment below uh, with where uh, you are from. Uh, and <laughs> I need to get some tea, you guys. For some reason, I, I, I don't think it's bronchitis or anything. I'm sure it's not bronchitis, but it, it seems as if uh, every time. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Faye. You're good to go. appreciate you. Uh, and... Yeah, it seems as if I start to get going on the the, the talking side, that's when <laughs> it starts to uh, come up a, a little bit there. But yeah, the topic is on the social media side and why you should actually look into and actually delete it uh, and going to go into some talking points and then also share my personal story uh, when it comes when it comes to this. Uh, and one thing I did not consider is how it will work on uh, sharing video on the audio side, but we may not even give that a, a try on that. But I am going to go ahead and just share a quick story on myself when I started uh, removing uh, social media uh, and also just decluttering a lot of the input that was coming in, such as the news was one of those. So uh, myself, if you're just now coming across me, the name is Sterling White, buy and hold investor from Indianapolis, Indiana. Grew up in the not so good parts of the city where I almost lost my life at five years old due to a stray bullet. Uh, however, luckily was able to get out of that uh, environment and actually um, uh, able to, to make something out of myself uh, from that. And then fast forward, got started in real estate. This was in 2009 on the construction side. Then 2013, started buying single families, bought 150 single families, and then started buying multifamily where I was able to scale just under 500 units. Uh, and one of the things that really allowed me to start to lay the foundation was really this particular moment that happened in my early 20s, which was I was at a college party doing uh, what college kids do, uh, do, having a good time, going out there uh, and drinking. And I no longer drink, but uh, is with that is I ended up drifting away uh, from the crowd. And uh, from that is I'm out in the middle of this boat. And this lake or pond, I never know what the difference is between a lake and a pond. Uh, you guys comment, what is the difference uh, between those two? And uh, this uh, boat. And then this beaming question comes down to me uh, and asks, uh, this beaming question comes down to me and asks, Sterling, is this what you want to do with your life? Uh, and I answered uh, back to that question, no, this is not. And I did three key things that really changed the trajectory of my life. My uh, first one was I cut out the news. Huge. So much negativity involved uh, with that and waking up watching the news is that you have that mental drain on your mind because it's all it's they push more negativity. And every now and then they'll chime in a little bit of uh, 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 positivity, but more of it's on the negative side as a way to keep you uh, ingrained in that and keep you watching it. The second was I started to focus on mindset which I started uh, Earl Nightingale, the Jim Rohns, the Zig Ziglar's, all these uh, individuals as, as a way to rewire my whole frame in, of thinking because I grew up in poverty. Uh, and I wouldn't say I was at the, the bottom where I had to put, put uh, pieces of bread to, to like, uh, what do you call that? Eating uh, bread with uh, sugar in between or peanut butter or something that was very, but we grew up on welfare. We grew up on in section eight housing and I remember there were uh, times that I uh, didn't even know if I was going to make it the, the next day because just of the uh, environment that we were in, that 
One day I was playing basketball with a friend and the very next day they were gone because they tried to rob the, the pizza man next door uh, and the pizza man just happened to be packing uh, and ended up taking his life. And the next day I asked where was so-and-so and they said, oh yeah, he uh, he ended up getting shot and he's dead now. And it was, oh, and it was just another day in the hood. It was, I just kept playing basketball. So that was the the type of environment that I grew up in and from that is the way the beliefs and the thinking that was ingrained in me uh, was I, I had to remove 90, 95 percent of that through all of the mindsets, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, reframing that I had to do by keying in on that. And those of you who are on here, go ahead and comment below with where you are from. As mentioned, I'm here in Houston, Texas, and I moved about six months ago from Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. And uh, so that's what I started doing. I listened to Earl Nightingale, the Jim Rohns, the Zig Ziglar's, the Tony Robbins, reading the books, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, and from that, that's when I started to remove a lot of those uh, limiting beliefs uh, that I had about myself and just about how to operate in the world around me. Uh, so there's that. But I do want to go into the first point when uh, it comes to the social media side, which We've got uh, D.Y. Uh, Lifestyle who goes into this, which talks about uh, true need to stop comparing my daily life to people's highlight reel. It's a facade. And that's one of the first things that I wanted to go into is that when it comes to social media, it's all highlights. Uh, majority of it is highlights. Uh, you have some people that actually document the journey to the highlight, but many just actually post the highlight. Uh, and this is a common issue I see of people who are, one, getting into to real estate, uh, for instance, they don't realize that it takes time uh, that, for instance, is uh, people try and uh, compare themselves to myself when I was able to get that very first multifamily deal, which was a 46 unit uh, apartment complex. But and uh, 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 and that took I started in 2009 as on the construction side, and I started buying as an actual operator in 2013, and I bought my very first multifamily in 2017, but people come to me and they'll say, it's been four, it's been six months, I have not been able to find my first deal of that size that you were able to get. But they don't realize all of that that led to that deal, one, was completely full-time into the industry. A lot of times is their part-time uh, in the industry, meaning that they have a full time job that they're working and they're doing this on the side. There's that. And then also is made a lot of sacrifices and put in 80, 90, 100 uh, hours on a per week basis. But they don't see all that. They just see, oh, he acquired that that one that he acquired that deal. Uh, so that's one is comparing uh, what we've got here, comparing uh, your life uh, to people's uh, highlights, because that's uh, that. And then the next is that it's all it, it is a, a, a facade, uh, meaning that let's say and this would be if you're, um, uh, let's say, an Instagram model or someone uh, who is into fitness is you have to realize that these pictures are edited. Yes, these pictures are edited. And you've got young, uh, let's say, young people who are looking up to these people and saying that, man, I want to be built just like that person, not even realizing that it was actually photoshopped in order for them uh, to uh, get that visual that you see on your actual screen. So these are all the things of the, the instant gratification that we're in. And then it's causing us to, well, what I've uh, experienced uh, firsthand is that our uh, attention span is actually even getting uh, smaller because we're just jumping around so much. Uh, but this, I, I really just want to touch on the, the instant gratification, especially those who are looking to get their first deal on the real estate side is that it takes time. That very first deal that I was able uh, to acquire myself at uh, 23 years old is ended up taking close to about eight to nine months. And the person that I ended up uh, partnering with, who was my uh, mentor at that time, is I was working uh, within his business for completely free. Yes, completely free. And people uh, think that, and this is another uh, instant gratification that uh, people uh, feel that they, they don't realize that 
before he ended up becoming my mentor is I built a relationship with him uh, about three to four months and never even anticipated that this would be the person that I would actually partner with. So when people are saying, how do I uh, find investors or find a mentor is that they don't realize that that also takes time. It wasn't that I simply approached that person and said, I have a deal. Uh, yeah, I, I have a deal. Go ahead and, and invest in this. No, it actually took time. I worked for him for free and actually lived in my friend's den. Uh, and I remember every day I had to wake up. Yeah, two terriers. And those things would bark all the time. Uh, and then also one of those dogs did not like me so much because it would always poop right in front of my bed. So that's what I would have to wake up to. But that was uh, something is I was making sacrifices such as that living in my uh, friend's den. So I didn't have to have any uh, overhead. And that way I would be able to work for him uh, for free. But that was the sacrifice also that I made, which is not a lot into the highlights that people see on the, the social media side. So that's the first point is the instant uh, gratification. I want to see if I can share share screen here and then share this up there, this window. Give me a second. And I want to see if you can actually hear the audio. Uh, yes. So if you can hear the audio, comment below. All right. So if you can hear the audio, give me a thumbs up on that. Uh, if not, uh, I will just not uh, go with that. But because <clears throat> that's one documentary that I did just want to go through when it uh, uh, refers to the uh, social media side. So comment below if you were able to hear a bit of that. If not, I'll just completely uh, just scrap it uh, all together. And let me ensure that I'm good here. All right. Perfect. And then the second point that I want to make uh, is that, and let's go ahead and read off some uh, chats that we have here. And I appreciate everyone uh, who is currently on here. Uh, if it's important enough, it'll get to you regardless. That is a valid point there. And that's one of the first things that when you remove yourself uh, from social media is you start to feel FOMO, which is fear of missing out. And even the news, I have people that ask that, how have you not watched the news for as long as you've watched it? Uh, and I say that if something's important enough, I will hear about it. My mom even uh, texts me every now and then when it uh, to uh, give me an update on the weather. But if something's important, let's say here in Houston, if a hurricane is coming, that I will hear about the hurricane. There was a recent storm that was coming in that was called Nicholas. I was in a coffee shop uh, and it, this was abrupt news. Uh, and of it coming up. And I just sensed something was going on in the environment around me. Uh, and it, it turns out that the, uh, the uh, owner of the coffee shop was going around to everyone and said, hey, we're actually going to have to close up a little bit uh, sooner because there is a, a storm that's coming in. So that's firsthand how I was able to hear about that versus being on the, the news. And if something's important enough, uh, it you will hear from it. And then we've got uh, from Juan from Miami. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, thoughts on Grant Cardone Fund for non-accredited investors? I am not uh, too familiar uh, with that. Uh, Grant Cardone has been a, uh, was it someone who's been very, very influential uh, on my entrepreneur and also uh, investor journey. But as far as his uh, fund, I'm not uh, too entirely uh, sure about that. I would just get refer or uh, see if you can get uh, what do you call that? Uh, references from people who have actually invested with him and then see how those uh, results have uh, gone. Uh, and then we've got from here, I'm in Miami one. I'm in the works of moving to Texas to get out of Miami. Well, welcome to Texas. Uh, curious what part of Texas you will be moving to Dallas, San Antonio, Tyler, Houston, uh, maybe. And let me go ahead and jump around with this and just test some things around. Nope, that's not doing what I thought I was going to do. Okay, all right. Well, let's go ahead. Uh, I don't think I'm still sh uh, sh sharing my screen. But uh, let's get back to the second point that I want to mention is that it clears your mind when you remove yourself from social media. It's one less thing to have. And this is a philosophy that I've uh, picked up uh, is stoicism. And also, instead of adding things to my life is... Uh, in order to improve it and grow, I actually start to remove uh, things. 
And where I uh, where I currently live, it looks like I literally just moved into it because I like to live a very minimalistic lifestyle because life is already complicated enough. Uh, and comment below if you feel the same on that. Uh, but it's not easy. Uh, and there's tons of moving parts outside of that. So I try and keep everything that I can control as less chaotic as possible by keeping it uh, minimalistic. Uh, so with that is the is removing things versus adding uh, to it. And so with this is being it clears your mind is that one of the first things that many people do when they wake up in the morning is they have that phone right next to them and then they pick up the phone and then they scroll down Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, or, uh, or even TikTok. You scroll down those videos, and then now there you go. Uh, and now you've got those thoughts and those videos uh, or the, the content within your, your frame of mind. And the other thing that goes into this is the objective of these platforms is to keep you on them. And this is a very great documentary here, and I'll share it with you. Uh, and I don't think you'll be able to hear it. Let me see if I can turn this up. But essentially, this, this what you see on my screen, and I, I could blow it up even more. There we go. It's called The Social Dilemma, and it goes into... On the, and I'm not getting into uh, conspiracies or anything. This is actually really, uh, this is true information and it's actually uh, backed by uh, data. But the objective of these free, uh, these free platforms that you're on uh, is it's funded by advertisers uh, and advertisers, uh, they're the ones that are essentially the, the customers. So you're getting ads in front of you. But also the, the, the following thing is the, uh, what these uh, platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, their objective is to keep your attention. And they have algorithms and all these different, um, a, uh, what do you call it, artificial intelligence as a way to keep you on the platform. So for those of you who are on here, have you ever noticed, which I haven't watched the Instagram story in a while, but let's say it's, I, I, I believe it's the same even on Facebook, but if you if you watch, let's say, three people's stories, what will happen? What will happen is when you watch those three people's stories is when, let's say, you're following a 1,000 people or let's say 300,000 people. I'm just throwing some numbers out there. Those three people's stories that you watch, those will be the first three people aligned with all the uh, other people that you haven't watched their stories. So it's these little hacks that these platforms are doing as a way to constantly keep you on the platform. And the thing is, myself, is that uh, you're going against billions of dollars of technology to keep you on the platform. Myself is I had to just have it deactivated and removed altogether because I had difficulty combating against the algorithms. I would do certain uh, techniques uh, such as, let me see if I can uh, shrink this up here. So when you go to, and I'm going to show you what my YouTube looks like, and you'll you'll be thinking to yourself, how did he get his YouTube to look like that? So this is my YouTube. When you go to this, and I use certain apps, but now I don't even have Instagram, but when I go to YouTube, uh, for instance, or even uh, I, I still have uh, uh, Facebook because I, I use it for uh, business purposes, but I'm actually not on there. My team's more so on there. But these are the types of apps that I use. This is the homepage of YouTube. So the app that I use is I don't see any recommended videos. I don't see uh, I, what else do I I don't see live chats. Uh, I'm using StreamYard, so I'm able to see your chats over here. But I use these certain uh, what I did is I, so this is on YouTube. When it came to, to Instagram is I actually removed it uh, from my phone. I was still using it uh, for, for business. So I removed it from my phone. That way I just wouldn't constantly just uh, keep checking it. Uh, and then I would go online and I had an app to where I couldn't see the feed or I couldn't uh, see the stories. So it's these little things uh, that if you're someone who decides that, well, I just don't want to uh, uh, do away with uh, social media altogether. Those are just some minor uh, hacks that you can use. 
Uh, so let me name off a couple of the, 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 the apps. So the app that I use on YouTube, it's called Unhook YouTube. And these are free. They're just simple Google extensions. Uh, and they allow you to one, as you saw on my YouTube screen, when I go to YouTube, there is nothing there. So when I go to YouTube, uh, the only thing that comes up on my screen are videos that I actually personally, uh, I, I personally search myself. Uh, versus what YouTube does, it's got an algorithm, uh, and that algorithm plays to plays to previous videos that you've watched or even things that you've clicked on Google, and it's just going to keep you on that platform as much as possible. And I know you've seen that to where you visit your homepage, you're like, oh, let me go view that, or you click on a video, you see the recom the recommendations, oh, let me click on that, and then now it's like two three hours later, and you're like, what just happened? There's my life. So, um, but I do want to share a, a story going back to this is that uh, a friend of mine is, I remember we were on the, uh, a bus because I was taking a uh, trip. Uh, this is with uh, other uh, entrepreneurs. And one thing is I like to be very observant about observant, I believe is what you call it, uh, <coughs> of uh, what's going on around me. And he was sitting right next to me and I kid you not, every four minutes, he would open up his Instagram. He would he would open it up, view stories, and then go ahead and like. A, he, he He's into the dating scene. Uh, so he would go to, to women's uh, posts and then like them. Uh, and then he would check his DMs. And then he would close the app. Four minutes later, he would hop right back on there and go through the same process of going on there, liking women's pictures, uh, and then uh, he would view some stories, and then he would check his DMs to see if someone had sent messages to him. And I'm I'm just watching this happen, uh, and that's just one of those things that it's built to keep you on the platform uh, and just realizing those certain triggers. And also, uh, dopamine is another thing that comes into play, but I don't want to go down that uh, rabbit hole uh, with that. But uh, when you log into these platforms or you're getting that validation from a certain post that you have is you start to get that dopamine uh, hit. Uh, and the last point that I want to mention uh, with this, with uh, why uh, you should delete uh, social media or at least remove it or uh, cut, uh, cut, uh, cut back from it, is it allows time uh, for you to focus more on other uh, projects and be able to free up that, that uh, mind space. Uh, so one of the things that has helped me is to focus more on the YouTube uh, channel uh, versus figuring out, OK, what do I need to, to post next on Instagram or uh, <laughs> uh, Facebook uh, or. Yeah, so it clears up that mind space and then just allows time to focus on other projects uh, and then also more time to devote towards the actual podcast uh, itself, uh, the, the, the podcast itself and also the YouTube channel. So I've cleared more of my mind to now be able to think of, okay, how can I be better in the current things that I'm doing? Uh, so it's just really freed up so much mind space. So those are truly the uh, three points that I wanted to go in uh, with you all and would love to hear your feedback on if you're still on social media, have you considered not being on uh, social media uh, or, cutting, uh, or cutting back on it? Or if you use apps too, would enjoy uh, hearing uh, from you on that. But uh, just in summary, uh, which was one of the points that was mentioned uh, earlier, uh, is that the instant gratification. That's the first thing from social media. Uh, everyone's comparing uh, their lives to people's highlights. Uh, prime example, this goes back to that. The first deal that I acquired, which on the, the multifamily side was a 46 unit deal, which that I started in the industry 2009 and bought that very first uh, prop that that particular property apartment uh, eight years later. But people just see the post of acquiring that 46 unit deal, not realizing everything that it took up to that point and was full time in the industry that time. And you've got people who are in W2s who are doing this as like a side project and wondering, how come I haven't acquired my first deal yet? It took you this long. It, yeah, it took me. Uh, eight to 10 months once I made the transition from single family to multifamily and people take that small little window of the eight to 10 months it took, but they don't realize everything that it led up until that uh, point. 
the next uh, point that I alluded to was it clears your mind. It's less clutter that you have going on. It's the same with the news. Uh, and uh, for anyone is that uh, that's on here is do you still watch the news? But once I ended up cutting that out, and this was in my early uh, 20s, is so much mental drain was just removed because with that, uh, the news is it's tons of uh, negativity and you're rarely they'll sprinkle in just a little bit like uh, Fruity Pebbles. And growing up, I didn't I wasn't able to afford Fruity Pebbles. I had Fruity Diamonds uh, was what I would have. But they sprinkle in just a little bit uh, every now and then uh, some positivity. Uh, and then the uh, last is it allows you to just focus uh, time on other uh, projects because now you're not. Uh, uh, or or, uh, or even uh, yourself, because now you're not having to scroll through uh, Instagram or scroll through TikTok and uh, all these uh, platforms that are built to keep you on there. Yes, understand that for us to have escapism, uh, which is completely fine from that, but sometimes it gets to be a little bit more on the aggressive side when we're on these platforms because they're actually built to keep us on them. So I appreciate everyone uh, so much for uh, listening on this. I, I do these on an ongoing basis, really uh, making a push to provide more uh, value to you. Uh, for those of you who just want uh, more insights that are, all, are already in uh, real estate and looking to grow more, maybe you're in single family looking to grow to multifamily, uh, or you're you're doing smaller multifamily or looking to grow from there. Uh, is there a link below to actually schedule a call with myself personally where we do a strategy session to help bridge the gap from where you are uh, to where you want to go? So appreciate everyone on here. Uh, comment below with literally anything because I personally respond to each and every message. Until then, keep being awesome, everyone. Thank you so much.